A lot of people could get hurt. Just come back safe. Oh, Wait, look at that. Oh, we sort of had a feeling it was coming, no? Lizard League, that is all. Lizard League. I think Rex lives, but then again, gun. Come on, Rex, it's Lizard League. They really saved this for the next episode to start it out? Guardians, protect them! Well, one of these scenarios is more severe and terrifying than the other. What a waste of garlic knots and character lives. Two Lizard League. Oh, you never know. You never know. There's gotta be a better way than this. There's gotta be a better way than individually smashing the parasites. That was cool. Rudy's soft, supple flesh. He's highly vulnerable. Wow, it's kind of like Mr. Fantastic. Hello. Someone. Anyone. Give it to me. I'll do it. Oh, it's not the time for inviting. Stop it. I'm stronger and faster than you, and you know. Okay, alright, just let him do it. Nope. Hash it out later. Fail. Okay. Funny to think that this season started out with them fighting in an alternate dimension or timeline or whatever. He's a pop? Eve also susceptible, no? I think I severely underestimated the parasites. Obviously, they'd be a problem if they got to Earth. I didn't expect them to be this powerful. There you go. Saving the kid whose father killed him. Hit it, hit it. There you go. Well, I guess Robot turned out to be pretty important on this mission after all. We told you we were too powerful. Is this curable? All right, you gotta be very careful. You gotta do a very thorough scrubbing after this. You need to just blow up this whole thing, which you should have done from the beginning with your space nukes that I'm sure you have. Agree to my demands and I will consider not destroying half of the nation. <sighs> I knew he was too annoying to die. I'm sure he's okay. Doesn't look that serious. Walk it off. <laughs> if you can't take a bullet to the head, can you even call yourself a hero? Maybe this will improve his personality. I mean, yeah, he's, he's just doing the gun. Wow, Rex just saved a lot of people. With his... With his stub of an arm. He did. Let him, let him, let him work, let him... He's, no! <laughs> Are you alright? You okay? <laughs> yeah, he's fine. Just a bullet to his head, missing arm, death of all his friends. Another day in the Survey Corps. Never better? That's the least of your problems right now. <laughs> you know me. I'm Invincible. Okay, a little bit early there, but we need to get this guy to an OR now. <laughs> you need to get him to OR ten minutes ago. Good God. Jeez. Oh, she's alive. Probably severely injured. Okay, so it's just Kate. That's all right. It's not as bad as I thought. Kate's gone. That's sad. Big small girl is all right. And Rex has zero injuries. For a whole host of reasons, I think every police officer in that facility needs to be fired. You saved us from the sick weeds. And for that, we are grateful. But we can't let you leave because this uh, look, is just go. part two. But we cannot permit you to leave with the great betrayer. Oh, that too. No, that's no. We're leaving with the great betrayer. Me? This is all you're doing. I understand. Please wash yourselves, wash your clean, cleanse your everything. And that's how Mark started an interplanetary war. Sorry. He actually is murdering them? Wait, what? What am I not understanding? Hold on. Okay, they're not dying. They, they live in space. They're just fine. They can just float into the void. Someone will pick them up. For a second, I thought it was just annihilating Martian soldiers. Uh, oh, whoa, oh, oh, hello, hello. Getting a little close there. Amber who? I... Good work. This is uncomfortable for me, but I'm a big man. Thanks. You too. You're not your father, see? You okay? You seem a little shook. 
The hardest thing that Rudy had to deal with this episode or these past couple episodes was Monster Girl yelling at him and being called controlling. Those are scars that might never heal. I remember my first rejection and every subsequent rejection that I've ever had. Thankfully, I was able to control my fear response this time. I changed myself. Damn. Fixed a problem. I can do the same for- Don't. But it just makes sense I to- I said, don't. He doubled down. That's who Rudy is. Let's be honest. That's not the only reason you're here. The GDA There's never only one reason for Cecil being here. Superhero children. Wow, he will not give it up. We paint clouds on the ceiling. Look, after everything Nolan put you through, no one expects you to raise this kid. Let us help. Wait, what? <laughs> I thought that was an intro to a longer pitch. That was the whole thing. Paint on the ceiling. We paint clouds on the ceiling. Dramatic pause. Mama! Oh, Aww. sweetie. Your that mom sealed it. Is far, far away. I'm not your mama, kid. <laughs> this isn't about Nolan or me. It's about Mark. Well, this is about the kid. I mean, His only on. He's brother, a kid. He's a baby. which makes him family to me too. Oh. I'm more than qualified to do this. Isn't that right? Damn, Debbie just racking up the wins against Cecil. I expect to be kept in the loop. Mm, it's nap time. Damn, cold. Cold! That's gonna be a long, painful walk back to the cloud room. It's funny that when the baby showed up, I, I immediately felt, actually, this is probably a good thing for Debbie. As wild as the situation is, as much pain as it might evoke, thinking about the connections to Omni-Man and him having a new Mantis wife really quickly. But it's just something important for Debbie to focus on that's bigger and more useful than just her emotional state. I wonder about this sort of thing, because I do think it's important to understand yourself and things that happened to you and how you got to where you were and conceptions you have that aren't serving you that you probably learned at some point, which might involve going back to your past and figuring out where you picked that up, how it probably meant something for your survival at a certain time, or that's how you internalized it before your brain was fully formed, before you had the experience that you have now or the ability to process information that you have now. By the same token, you absolutely can overdo that. Where you start hunting for things that went wrong and you start hunting for ways in which you were damaged, you feel the incessant need to attribute things that are happening to you to things in the past or people in your life in order to understand them with the thinking that if you understand them, they will be healed, which is not always the case. I mean, it's also true, I think, that the more you focus on something, the, the bigger it becomes. And speaking for myself, in a lot of cases, if I'm trying really hard to dig myself out of an emotional problem through sheer focus, a lot of the time it just ends up making things worse because I'm devoting all my energy to that thing. And it's that saying, grass grows where you water it. You focus intently on everything that's wrong with you and all your problems. In a sense, you're watering all the things that are wrong with yourself or even way more generally and perhaps worse, just the overall feeling that things are bad. Sometimes big changes or perspectives have a way of making all that clear, you know, how irrelevant and how pointless it all was. But waiting on that, relying on that is perhaps over reliant on chance to determine your fate. One way to address this whole I'm way too deep in my own rumination cycle thing is not to try to stop feeling a certain way or eliminate a thought or try to reason your way out of it with your current system, which is perhaps flawed from the beginning. It's better to focus on something that's not about you. Do something good. Get involved in something. Take some responsibility somewhere. I think that's basically what just happened with Debbie. I mean, even before the kid showed up, it looked like she was actively going in that way. And it was sort of by not going down that rabbit hole anymore, but taking actions to improve for life. In that sense, it almost feels like the whole disaster with Omni-Man gave Debbie the chance to become a fuller character Sacreds or person. Sleep. They never let me sleep. I'm gonna need an entire box of Q-tips to get all that Sequid slime out of my ears. <laughs> You're lucky you only got some in your ears. I should not have finished that sentence, but okay. Oh, you guys got a big hurt coming. That sucks. I wasn't around to help them. Could we save Kate's brain and put her in a robot body? Like Donald? Damn it, Rex. Coming to my house and giving that heartwarming speech in the final moments of your life before the bullet hole. Hi, Amber. Good job, Oliver. Oliver? Oliver. Mark. Brabra. Oh, this kid's he's grown real fast. He's got a shorter lifespan than a human. Kate Chaw was a I guess her brain didn't warrior. make it. That was Kate's real power. Her unwavering belief that this world is good. It's a beautiful eulogy. I know a real depth of knowledge of her. I didn't expect that kind of depth in the relationship. It was a beautiful service. I'm glad it didn't rain. Terrible day for rain. It is raining. Why do I feel this way, Marcus? Huh? But this... This is different. It's just recency bias. You'll get over it. That was terrible timing for that joke. Well, as Kate alluded to, they understand things about each other that no one else could. They both have died multiple times. Not many people can understand what that's like. You know, just 
them and Rudy, the Mueller twins. Also, you don't understand, she was different. It's always what I say after every breakup. It's really humanizing for Immortal. We have nothing in common anymore. How's your mom? Uh, sorry, you go. No, no, you go. Please. No, actually, I feel like this is the better of two problems to have on that scale. I would be excited to catch up. Sometimes what's more of a challenge is spending a lot of time together because then there's nothing to really say because you know all the same things. You have nothing to catch up on. Mark's story is definitely more interesting though. Is your mom losing her mind yet? That's uh, I'll, I'll great thing for her. And they really get along, which is awesome. Who wouldn't get along with Oliver, what? There you okay, go. Okay, can I just say this feels like a first date? Yeah, Oh, bad it's first beginning. Date. Really thought college would be different. Right? You were deluding yourself, Mark. Whenever my friends here ask where you are, I'm always like... Philadelphia. And I have no one to talk to about it. I mean, sure, there's William, but... That's he's lonely. More your friend than mine. That's really isolating. You know, sometimes I wish I never got powers. Then I could just be with you and forget about everything else. Thinking about it now, if Mark decided, I'm not going to be a superhero, and that's really how he felt, and it wasn't because he was afraid of what it would take. There were no excuses. It's genuinely what he felt was right from the bottom of his soul. I don't know if I would totally object to that. I would say it's logistically maybe not the best move for a number of reasons, but I understand that sometimes the best thing for you and the thing you most need is what appears to be a mistake at first. If you are ever going to get to a place where you're using your gifts and abilities in a way that's really useful and enduring long term, it's probably better if you get there naturally or and organically instead of being forced because you'll just implode. It has a high probability of making things worse and in Mark's case that would be dangerous. You know, it's like when I dropped out of high school, everyone told me it was a mistake and it really was. It really was a mistake. For all my complaints about school, for all the ways it didn't serve me, it wasn't optimal. Like the optimal thing would have been to continue to think the way I was thinking, gain the individuality I was seeking, sever this blind faith I had in authority, start thinking for myself, you know, all that good stuff, but then also get high grades and just keep the doors open, keep my options open, right? That would have been the best thing. It was a mistake, just logically. Nevertheless, I have zero regrets about it and I'm thankful it happened because it just was where I was at at the time. And the net positives of following my instinct in that way, even towards something that was not optimal logically, was way more important for me than school ever could have been. So it would be somewhat hypocritical of me to not allow that same thing to other people, even if it's someone like Mark. The issue is that's not where he is. He likes being a hero. He wants to be invincible. There's this fear of, am I my father? He is, but in a great way, not in the way he was initially saying it. And I think a really good relationship is something that it supports and enhances that. Amber's heart is clearly there. She's been very supportive. Sometimes as un romantic as it seems, it really does just come down to the circumstantials. Sometimes things just don't work out for logistical reasons. Sometimes your life just takes you on different paths. If somebody really loves you, and I'm talking real love, not sexual attraction or fleeting romance or whatever, I mean, the way you love without expectations or the sort of binding vow type stuff, they want that for you also. But Sweet, you do but... have powers. And that means you have an obligation to make the world a better place. And if you didn't feel that way, we wouldn't be dating to begin with. Mm, interesting. What do we do now? Oof. You all right, Mark? Oh, Mark, hi, Donald. Look who's back! Whoa, Rick! Ooh, Donald's starting the Bionic Man Initiative. He went through intensive body reconstruction. That kind of trauma can resurface. Donald. Is that what this is? Okay? Is it a side effect of the surgery? Because I think Donald's overreacting. Well, you look like shit. And that's coming from a guy that looks like this. <laughs> Nothing can stop this guy. When that bullet went through my head. He's never, I we're never near the end of this. Before my eyes. And I didn't like what I saw. Oh, wow. I was such a dick to Kate. A bullet that had made him better. To Eve too. To every woman I've ever dated. That's a hard reckoning. What is it about being a superhero where... We go around saving lives while ruining them at the same time. <laughs> this is life, Mark. It's always one step backwards, two steps forwards. If you're lucky, for a lot of people, it's one step backwards and then two steps backwards. You just do the best you can for now with what you have. Sometimes I truly marvel at the extent of my screw ups. It's pretty phenomenal what I'm capable of messing up. But you know, you take it in stride. It's not the whole thing. And the cliche is so true. It's always better late than never, especially when it comes to figuring things out about yourself and how to live. Let's walk him in the new Rex. He's still young and there's still a lot of good he can do. All right, let's hear it. <laughs> Fishing. <sighs> Fishing for attention, Mark. Rex is the one that gets shot in the head and yet Mark is the one that needs sympathy. If they did break up, there's a real danger that he just rebounds to Eve without learning anything. Oh, Mark. 
Oh, hey, Eve, you here to see Rex? The rebound has begun. Turns out Rex really likes home decorating magazines. Never would have... Wait, why? I That's a lie. because he's never really had a home. Wait, really? That's cute. Surprisingly cute. Are you okay, Mark? Yeah. No, um, I'm fine. What happened with Amber exactly? Bye. Oh, bye, Mark. Eve! Ugh. The bearer of spring colors and waterfall countertops. This is real love and trust to open up to her that he likes home decorating. I just ran into Mark and... Ugh, I know, right? He and Amber are... Wait, what does that yeah, mean? Yeah, you didn't tell her. Oh, oh, oh. Ten best bedroom makeovers? Uh, yes, please. Oh, yes, Invincible Season 2, Episode 6. The the one where Rex becomes lovable. The home decor thing is somewhat relatable to me because even though I really don't have any interest in real estate or owning property and I don't live in Japan and don't plan to anymore, I really enjoy looking at cheap housing listings in rural Japan for some reason. It's like, oh, I could live in this town I've never heard of in Japan for only $8,000. I could bring my cat there and we could start over in the Japanese countryside. I too could live the fruits basket life. I don't think you're the right fit for us. No? No. I'm not comfortable hiring a spy. Spy? It's just Cecil and drag. Just fly your umbrella ass out of here, Mary Poppins. I'm April Housum, here for the nanny position. No, That's a suspicious begin, name. You should know that Cecil sent me. And there it is. Should have just named her April Babysitter. I think it's unacceptable to mislead a potential employer. Especially one looking for someone to take care of their child. Cecil coached on this. That was a forced smile at the last minute. Please come in. Oh, there we go. Fooled by April Houseperson. Encourage a child's natural curiosity for the world. Here you go, buddy. That's a very timely scissor grab. And a safe space to grow and learn. Well, it's going to be a short-term position. I work for you, Miss Grayson, not Cecil. Solid pitch. Period. You're the boss, not him. What? Mama boss. Oh, he's learning so fast. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll keep an open mind for this April house person. Cecil. Reminds me of where I grew up. In a tree? <laughs> Ray and Rex are in the hospital, and immoral is... Oh, let's be frank, his head is not in the game right now. Oh, wow. Mortal got taken out. And you know where to find me when you change your mind. Thanks for your time, Eve. I'll leave you to your guest now. I don't know, maybe I'm deluding myself. Maybe I'm getting tricked too. But I can't help but like Cecil. I feel like there's so much more to him and he's doing his best. Even if his methods are questionable. For all his scheming and interference and being all up in your business inappropriately, he's like too tired to be manipulative, you know? He kind of wears his heart on his sleeve. You can't trust him, but in a different way you can trust him if you get what I'm saying. He's not this snake that smiles in your face and is all about the ends justify the means totally. He does seem to be grounded to something more than just being power hungry or wanting to be in control. He's trying to do good. I think that's at the heart of his character. Can we talk? Mark's ex-girlfriend and his next girlfriend. I smelled college drama. I actually came to talk, but if you're busy, I can... What's on your mind? Do you know anything about girls? Shut your mom. I see. <laughs> Girl trouble. <laughs> Art knows he was the right man. Relationships aren't easy. I should know. I've been in plenty of them in my day. That's true. These problems are not unique to Mark. Rex was my first serious boyfriend, which is I'm so sad sorry. and embarrassing to admit out loud. You make a great boyfriend now. Start somewhere. Ow, truly digging in there. I don't care when Mark cancels our date or forgets to text. I mean, he's saving the world. Yeah. It's, Two months in space is a long time. It's, but it makes me feel like a jerk. Because I'm doing exactly to her what my dad did to me and my mom. Whoa there, Mark. Whoa, whoa. Hold on. Time is a way of sort of dulling the pain of things, but my memory could be faulty. I don't have the clearest recollection of season one, but as far as I can recall, Mark never grabbed Amber's face and used it to kill a crowded car full of commuters, though it may have happened. What's unique about this and what I like about it is it's a twist on what I feel is an annoying trope, as I mentioned about superhero things, where it's always so unilateral and so unbalanced. The hero is doing all these great things and then, you know, the girlfriend is mad because you were five minutes late to my dog's dance recital. It's like, these things are not the same. It's really cool that you managed to get your, your painting on the wall of that pizza restaurant that sells artwork. It's not the same thing. I'm happy for you. I'm sure your play is great. I'm sure you did a great job. I'll catch one of your performances eventually. Yes, I lost my 
promise ring in a fight to save the entire population of Manhattan. Why are you crying? This is they're actually great people and they have a nice relationship and they're both working on it and they both really care and they're both considering the other person's point of view. Imagine that. Seeing this, it's like, why did it take this long? Why was this so hard to do before in all the superhero movies I've seen? I, I don't want that kind of life for Amber. She deserves better. Well, deserves not really the right question. When we're together, I feel guilty. Like I'm taking him away from people who really need him. It's tough. Oh, that's true. That thing I mentioned about superheroes transfers to Amber. Why are you here talking to me when you should be talking to him? Go home, Mark. Go home and be with your girlfriend. It's so simple. I don't know if it solves the problem, though. Even after everything he did, I didn't realize how much I missed him. I don't know. That's real. Maybe that makes me a bad person or nope. something. Not at all. It's complicated. And then the last thing he told me before the Viltrumites took him away was Read my books. I'll never I forget that. Or I'm sorry. <laughs> read my books, Mark. Was, read my books. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he say that? I don't know. I gotta read his books to find out. No one wrote more than just travel books. What? He wrote Wait, he was writing travel books? Under a pen name when you were a kid. What? He was an aspiring author? Can you believe he gave them to me as a tip once? <laughs> A big spender? That is was not. so Nolan, thinking that his works were the greatest gift, <laughs> better than money. I know you like money, but you know what's even better than money? My science fiction novels. Nolan. This whole time I thought he was writing autobiographies. Turns out he was writing Tripopedia articles and fanfics. Between Rex's home interior obsession and Omni-Man's fiction writing obsession, this is the episode of surprising humanization. Hate tribes on the planet Wreck? I told Nolan they were great. Real exciting. Uh, I never read them. Read the books, Mark. Read your father's books. Oh, it's gonna be a very potent experience for sure. This is true passion project. This is human. There's no writing books on Vilcrum. That's not a strong activity. I bet half of them are illiterate. I don't know whether to think Vilcrumites are illiterate or if they've evolved to the point where they are born knowing how to read. It's one or the other. Vilcrum, man, that must be a planet. They just go around punching everything. Anything that breaks isn't worthy of existing in Vilcrum society. They go around punching trees, plants, dogs. It's going to be all right. I promise. We'll get through this together. Okay, this is a thing, isn't it? The man with the invincible gun. Catchy title, Dad. I would honestly do an episode of the whole book. He was a mystery, a stuff of legends. Stories oh, about good. him stretched across the 12 galaxies. Okay, it's in Nolan's voice, too. For it wasn't a weapon to be used in haste. Okay, hold on a second. What's hilarious to me is that we're seeing this, but if you're just reading the text, it sounds like a user manual for the weapon. I'm seeing space piranhas, I'm not hearing space piranhas. It's like those blurbs game writers write for your weapons. It looks awesome. I can see this having real unintended consequences in the universe. There, there, there it is. It poses a huge threat to our mission. Odd. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We well, finished the book, Mark. Savage planet, savage beasts. God, I would be so excited to find this. You know what? I did find this. This is weird to think about. I've actually had this exact experience. When my grandfather died, I was helping clear out some of his stuff, and I found boxes and boxes of his poetry and writings and screenplays, which I just stayed up the whole night reading. And it was really surprising. I mean, for a bunch of reasons. One, it just made him so much more human to me. I mean, until then, he was this mythical figure, in a sense, like a parent squared. He was a really nice person that treated me really well. But I think just as a function of his generation, he was he was somewhat stoic. And also the majority of my interactions with him happened when I was really young. But he had real hearted soul that I got to experience on paper. The other thing was that it was surprisingly relatable. Sometimes these moments are a mixed blessing when you realize how similar you are to people you're related to. Because on the one hand, it's a connection to them and you get this indescribable feeling where you can get just the slightest glimmer of that long line into history that you're connected to. You're, you know, you are your ancestors and your family in a very literal sense. But then the unpleasant or unsettling part of that is you're like, am I even a real person? I thought all these things were me and I thought I'd come to these things on my own conclusion through my own experiences and insight. That can't be the case if I'm just this similar to someone who came before me. I had those feelings reading his works. I also have thought in passing what it's going to be like someday, maybe, if this ever happens, if I ever have kids and they have access to these videos, you know, this these thousand plus videos I've made of me watching and talking about shows. That's going to be a surreal experience for any kids I may have someday, if they watch. My future kids and actually 
far beyond that. You know, like my distant descendants can essentially watch TV with me if they so choose and if videos survive. Hopefully there's no internet apocalypse. Our mission was simple. It's also possible that these contain a coded message. Report back to Space Command Headquarters. The first thing we noticed was its gravity. There's no dialogue in these books. It sounds like a diary. But the planet had other plans. This event was unspecified by the narration of the book. Where's the infinity ray when you need it? Because of the gravity on this planet, Ragnars had evolved strength like no other. Maybe this is a memoir. And I feared this place would be my grave. Wait. No way. It doesn't sound like fiction. I mean, come to think of it, he couldn't have told Art that they were memoirs because he was still undercover. Bermuda. I hear it's lovely this time of year. Well, I know it's bad when Cecil's telling you to take a hike. I'm fine! You okay? What? Send it here. What is that? Someone's coming in hot from deep space. Is it Alan? It's Alan. New ripped Alan. Invincible Sea lived again. Crap. His navigation skills are not the best. Uh, you just right with the punching. He just came out here looking for someone to punch. Only man sent you. Alan, yeah, that upgrade really showing off right now. That's uncalled for. Hi, sir. Mark says I'm a pal. He also says I'm essentially the king of space, uh, so you should be very nice to me. Took some liberties there. You just charged up here and attacked me. Not very heroic of you, Earth superhero of Earth. I... Time to go to Bermuda. Bermuda. you were someone else. That's where Mark's dad. Now that guy's problem. He, his girlfriend yeah, just died. Yeah, his girlfriend died. Well, now Girlfriends. I feel like a giant douchebag. That's how it goes. You gotta fight with someone in the supermarket or on the street or whatever. You fight with the lady checking the receipts at Walmart because you didn't steal anything. You just lost your receipt. It's not that big a deal. And you just want to get home. It's not worth stealing $5 worth of Walmart merchandise. And then on that long walk through the parking lot, you think, well, maybe she's going through something. Maybe that was uncalled for. Yes, I'm just doing my job is a poor excuse. No, it's not the most important high stakes battle to fight. You do have them, right? I'm gonna keep making that reference. Which kind are you talking about? It really captured the essence of college. Delete. All right, we should be good now. You know, on my planet, a sock on the door means somebody's fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Alan knows what's up. Alan went to college. It turns out he rebelled against the Empire like years ago. So that makes two of you. It's not much. Better than what we had before, which is a half of you. Me took him away. Said they're gonna execute him, if they haven't already. Um, that is, wow. That is quite the story. You okay? Do you think my dad's dead? I don't know. Viltrumites are weird about killing their own people. I think because it doesn't happen much anymore. Knowing the Viltrumites, I feel like they would just do trial by combat. Might is right, being the dominant political theory there. Why are you here exactly? Oh, yes, right, of course. Back to space with you, again. Sorry, Amber. Amber and I are in a weird place, that, and oh, now that my mom's oh. looking after my half-brother, I can't just ditch her. I mean, Alan probably gets it. I don't fight friends, because I would win, and then I feel terrible. It's a vicious cycle. I but get that, too. I should get going. Thetis will not be happy with me. Sometimes winning is worse than losing in that regard. I have a hunch about something, but I need a second opinion. Is this a memoir? Huh. This place sounds kind of familiar. Savage planet, savage beasts? And it's all stuff that can hurt Viltrumites. That's why my dad wanted me to read his books. Oh, He's telling whoa, us how to it is a code. Art. Oh, shit. He was thinking about this this whole time. I've heard rumors of a Viltrumite prison somewhere in space. Maybe they took him there. Want me to ask around? I'd appreciate that. Yeah, again, I don't. I can't really imagine the Vilgermites just blindsiding someone with execution or like actual jail. It feels more consistent with their philosophy to just let him loose and then they attack him. <laughs> and then if he wins, it means he was right. If it's a prison, it's a battle prison. Alan just such a warm, Thetis genuine guy. To attack when you need someone for the actual fight, I'll be there. Okay, but can you train though? Can you train this time? In order for a Viltrumite to be executed, he must. Oh, here be it is. And whole, worthy to stand and face the end of his life with honor. Through combat, at least they're consistent. Rejoin your people, Nolan. 
Let this not be your legacy. Nolan has a backup legacy already. How did a mere moment on Earth turn you into a weak, sentimental traitor? I got a pet. Who's weak now? That planet and its people are toxic if they could do this to you. Oh, kind of backfired. But I mean, it was always coming. Nolan suddenly on our side. that you left me to die on Mars. You had to trash my place, too. He didn't do it deliberately. On the plus side, your microwave went unused. Oh no, oh no. Oh, I thought a sequin was going to come out. Oh no, a sequin came out! Why don't we just space nuke them again? No more sleep for you. Well, that's Let sort of a problem. A that's a bigger problem maybe than the Vilkermites. I'm visiting an old friend. Oh, it's you. I, I forgot about this whole thing. I forgot about this subplot. Is this even going to happen in season two? We have so many other things going on. <laughs> wow. So there wasn't that much action in this episode, unless you count Rex getting shot in the head. But it was really cool. I think this was the most heartwarming, humanizing episode I've ever seen of anything where a character got shot in the head. You okay? Yeah, I don't think Amber and Mark are gonna make it. I'm not sure anybody would really care. Maybe there are people out there who really are invested in Mark and Amber's relationship. I really like Amber. I'm impressed. I like the direction of this way better than the, the sort of false tension of, will I make it to my girlfriend's botany recital in time? But just, again, it's the scale. I don't know if I've gotten cynical or what. I, I think romantic love often is a really nice, really fun, great, important even supplement to actual love in a relationship and actual love is not confined by a relationship. The real important stuff you can have with Amber without dating Amber. Until there's kids involved, there will be other romances. There won't be, for counterexample, another Earth.